Hey guys, my name is Rachel. I am a fourth year veterinary student at Texas A&M University and I'm here to tell you how I got accepted into veterinary school early. Um, so it is a thing that you can be accepted without an undergraduate degree and for me that meant I applied as a sophomore in undergrad and was accepted and went in straight after my junior year of veterinary school. Um, I didn't know this at first, but when I was uh, researching the requirements, I realized a lot of schools uh, would accept you as long as you had all the prerequisites done and were a very competitive applicant. And in this video, I'll discuss what I did to become a competitive applicant, and I'll also dis discuss some tips for what you can do as well. So here's a quick view of my statistics. Um, this isn't meant to scare anyone. Um, you know, your GPA has to be good, your GRE has to be good, but I know a lot of people who got into vet school without statistics like these. Um, you know, a lot of people have more uh, experience than I did and got in. Some people, you know, they, they got into vet school after their third, fourth year of applying, and that's okay, you know. Um, one thing that I just wanna remind everyone is that, you know, everyone has a different path to veterinary school, this was mine and you know you'll figure out yours there's there's absolutely one thing that I tell everyone when they ask me what can they do to become a better applicant and that's get involved in research um, I worked in two different research labs during my three years of undergrad and I believe that's what set me apart from my peers um, there's a serious lack of veterinarians involved in research so if you can show them that you already have research experience under your belt you will really stand out, um, especially if you're able to get your name on a publication. So my research was um, animal related. It doesn't have to be, but it definitely does look good because you can count it as more animal experience. I worked in an ecology and evolutionary biology um, animal lab um, or biology lab and I worked with fish. So we did a lot of cognition studies and um, later on I even went down to Belize and um, did some ecology studies as well. Um, the second lab that I worked in was actually an organic chemistry lab and my uh, undergraduate school, University of Texas, allowed us to um, do research for credit, and I heard that organic, organic chemistry lab was one of the hardest um, labs to do, so um, luckily I was able to get accepted into that uh, program and do research for credit, and it actually raised my GPA, which was great. So um, a lot of people ask me what they should major in and what classes they should take. Um, I majored in biology. A lot of my peers in vet school, they majored in animal science, which is a popular major at AM. Um, this wasn't offered at UT. Um, biology was great for me because it went along really well with all of the prerequisites. Um, animal science majors, I think, are geared more towards um, large animal, um, which is great for them. That just wasn't my um, path. So those are two very good options. I know some people say you can major in whatever you want as long as you take the prereqs, but sometimes it's hard to get accepted into those prerequisites if you aren't in that major and it just gets complicated. If you're trying to get into vet school early like I did, it really helps to major in something like biology. Um, one thing that helped me apply early was that I did all of my prerequisites as soon as I could while I was in undergrad. Now the counselors are going to you know, kind of dissuade you from this because those classes are really hard and when you're a freshman in college, you're just getting used to everything and you want to take the easy classes. Uh, but if you think you can handle it, I definitely recommend it if you're trying to get accepted early. If not, it's okay. Um, everyone goes at their own pace. Um, I didn't really listen to my counselors and it worked out for me, but you know, sometimes they're right about other things. One thing to make sure though is that if you do take these classes early, um, make sure you're making good grades in them. Grades aren't everything, but they definitely are a part of your application. And if you don't think you can take you know, five science classes at once, don't overload yourself. It's better to space it out and make good grades than try to get through them all at once. 
So a lot of people ask me what my undergraduate GPA was. Um, you know, grades aren't everything. Um, I was kind of debating whether to post my GPA or not just because I'm one of those people who don't like to compare myself to others and I know when you look at someone else's GPA, sometimes it can be intimidating or you feel bad if yours isn't as good. Um, so, But for the purpose of this video, I want to share that mine was a 3.8 at the University of Texas. Um, it's also important to note that different colleges have different um, GPA um, percentages, I guess, or where you know one GPA at one college might not be the same GPA at another. Um, so they do take that into consideration, at least at A&M, I was told. Some tips to keep your GPA up. Don't be afraid to drop a class if you don't think you're going to do well in it. Um, I know it's scary to Q drop a class and it might look, you know, on, it's going to be on your record, but it's worth it. You know, I actually dropped organic chemistry the first time I took it. I failed the two tests and I was just a little bit overwhelmed that semester. So what happened was I dropped it and I took it over the summer and it was completely different for me. I ended up making an A in both organic chemistry one and two, even though I would have failed it the first time that I took it. And I think that is something that they can see and that they appreciate um, because they're, they're, if you drop a class, that's okay. They just wanna see that you do well the second time you try, try it. Just don't make it a habit to cue drop a class. And um, one more thing that I think can boost your GPA is take a PE class. I actually took weightlifting as one of my classes and it was only an hour, but it kept me active and it did it raise my GPA, you know, however so slightly, um, but it looks good and it's fun, so why not? Another question is, what about the GRE? Um, I received a 157 in reading, 160 in reasoning, and a 4.5 on analytic writing. They were in the 75th, 76th, and 82nd percentiles, respectively. For me, the hardest part of the GRE was the vocab. The math and reading sections were pretty much high school level. It had been years for me since I took an English class because I took a lot of AP credit and didn't take any English classes in college. Um, so my vocab was pretty limited. I hadn't been you know, practicing that for a while. Um, one thing that I found was interesting is that the GRE lasts for about five years and you can take the GRE as early as possible since none of your uh, college coursework gives you, uh, you know, any more knowledge that you need to take it. So um, you could potentially take it, you know, your sophomore year of college or even your freshman year if you think that you're going to apply soon and, you know, you're going to remember the vocab a lot better, um, which might have been helpful for me. I do recommend maybe looking up a few words every day, um, definitely taking, a, you know, getting a GRE prep book just because a lot of those questions are pretty um, specific to the test. They have a specific way of writing them and if you can just learn the questions it'll be a lot easier for you. How many schools did I apply to and how did I decide which one to attend? Um, I kind of went like go big or go home for the first time I applied and I applied to 10 veterinary schools um, that I knew had um, the option of acceptances without uh, or an undergrad degree. So at the time I was just kind of applying to see where I landed. I didn't expect to get in. Um, I just wanted to you know, maybe if I did get denied, I'd see where I could improve upon. But I ended up getting um, interviews at nine of those 10 schools. I only went to five of them because I had already been accepted to one um, and that I preferred more than the others. Um, I received acceptances from um, the Royal Veterinary College in London, LSU, Texas A&M, Auburn and the University of Georgia's dual DVM PhD program. Um, although I loved all of those schools, I chose Texas A&M because they, their facility was just awe-inspiring. It was brand new. They had just started their new curriculum and it was the cheapest by far because it was my in-state school. Now I highly recommend going to your in-state school if you can just because I think all of the universities here are very great quality and none of them are worth the extra, you know, 30 grand that you would be paying for an out-of-state school. 
Um, I did hear that A&M offers in-state tuition for their out-of-state students if they maintain a certain GPA, but I don't know if I would risk, you know, a couple grand for GPA because vet school is hard. Um, so I highly recommend going to your in-state in -state school if possible. As far as extracurricular activities, I recommend joining at least one physical club, one social club, and one volunteer club. So my physical or sports club was uh, gymnastics. I was on the UT official gymnastics team, and that was great because I got to you know do a sport that I had been doing for my entire life. Good stress reliever and keeps you active, which I think helps main, you know, maintain other aspects of your life. My social uh, club was a sorority. I think that was great because I'm kind of introverted and it got me out and to do, do things, um, making friends, stuff like that. And my volunteer club was the pre-vet society. So I was an officer of the pre-vet club, um, which I think was also great as far as looking good on the application. Um, and it also helped me with some volunteer hours. It great, gave me great connections. Um, so volunteer experience. Luckily for me, I knew that I wanted to be a vet for a while, so uh, starting at an early age, I was volunteering at the Second Chance SBCA. Um, that got me a lot of experience hours even when I was in high school. Um, once I started college, I volunteered with the Austin Humane Society and the Austin Animal Shelter. Um, I actually fostered a couple animals, and I think that's a great opportunity if you're short on hours because you know, you're fostering an animal, it's a 24-7 job, and it, it adds up. I think you can only use a certain amount and then they cut you off for fostering, but again, it certainly helps. Another thing that I uh, volunteered with was the Austin Bat Refuge, and I think this looked great because it was something that probably no other vet student had. Um, you know, bats aren't very common, it's good wildlife hours, and it's unique, kind of set me apart. So clinical experience definitely is important. I think this was probably the weakest part of my um, application compared to some of the other students that have been accepted because I went straight into veterinary school after three years of undergrad. I didn't have as many hours as some of my uh, peers who maybe took a year off to work as a veterinary technician. Um, I think this might have you know, made things more difficult for me during my first year just because They'd be talking about drugs that I would have no idea existed, um, and it certainly is something to consider. Um, I did have a lot of shadowing experience, and what I had was pretty varied. I uh, shadowed at a um, specialty center that did everything from like surgery to oncology, chemotherapy, radiation treatments, even acupuncture, which might have looked really good. Um, and I did work as a kennel tech for, for a summer. Uh, but I did take summer classes so that kind of prevented me from having more hours as a veterinary technician. I was very busy during undergrad. I did work multiple jobs, which may have helped uh, make me look more well-rounded. Uh, I did work as a biology TA. Um, I worked as a laboratory assistant um, through my research. And my favorite job of all, I worked for the UT Austin Wildlife Rescue. Um, this is just something I would have done for free, but I, you know, it was great to get paid for it. Um, what we did was um, whenever there was an animal on campus, it was my job to go and rescue it. You know, it was always an on-call job, it was after hours, but, you know, I love rescuing animals. If there was a snake or possum or a bat, um, it was my job to go and rescue it and release it off campus or, you know, bring it to the rehab center if it was injured. Um, although it was after uh, undergrad, I did work at the Austin Aquarium, and I think this was great to get more exotic experience, which led me to my path as um, a vet student pursuing exotic animal medicine. Um, at some point, I considered doing more veterinary technician experience because I didn't have as much as that at that, but I'm glad I did because it shaped my career path to what it is today. So I know I might not have covered everything. If you have any questions for me, please drop them in the comments below. Um, also, if you have any more ideas for things you want me to cover, let me know. I'd be happy to make another video. Please follow me um, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, that's where I have most of my content and I'd love to hear back from you.